now the Reformation. When many suppressed ideas reemerged during the Reformation, a Spaniard named Michael Servetus advocated Unitarian views. He was a lawyer, a physician, and a geographer. In 1531 in Strasbourg, Servetus publishes a treatise that declares that the doctrine of the Trinity makes Christians into tritheists. Where, his treatise asks, is that watchword of Jewish monotheism, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. In the next year, Servetus continues to assail the Trinity. There is a death penalty throughout Europe against anti-Trinitarians, so he has to move from city to city. Under a false name, he becomes the private physician to a Roman Catholic archbishop in France. Outwardly, he conforms to Roman Catholicism, but inwardly, he is still thoroughly anti-Trinitarian. Yet Servetus's concern about the doctrine, interestingly enough, is prompted by a concern for evangelism. He thinks that the expression of God as a triunity has kept the monotheistic Jews and Muslims from converting to the true faith of Christianity. Servetus is intensely biblical. He is passionately devoted to Jesus. But he holds that Jesus was only a temporary manifestation of God on earth, a manifestation who, like the rest of us, had not existed until the time of birth. But that interpretation, of course, has not been a debatable proposition in Christianity since the fourth century, because the Nicene Creed asserts that Christians must believe in, quote, one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, end quote. The Trinity is enormously important for Christians. First, it gives the teaching of Jesus authority. Second, it teaches that God himself died for humans, suffered the penalty for human sin. Third, it teaches that not a demigod from heaven, not a human adopted into the Godhead, but rather the Son of God, God himself, is constantly at the right hand of the Father, interceding on behalf of sinful human beings. Thus he will not defect, as the prince of the, even the prince of the angels had done. So it's a tremendously important doctrine to this day, but it wasn't part of Servetus' uh, propositional understanding of Christianity any more than it was of Jefferson's. And for denying what Christianity has taught for at least 1,300 years, Servetus was viewed as a blasphemer and heretic. And now we come to the 1540s. Servetus is discovered, revealed as the archbishop's physician. So the Inquisition suffers him to die by burning, but he escapes prison, probably through bribery, and in the summer of 1553, he turns up, of all places, in John Calvin's Geneva. John Calvin, another name Jefferson was not fond of. 